All right, Vortex and Cold Snap Cultist build overview. Let's go. So this video is going to be basically an overview of the Vortex, mostly Vortex, also some Cold Snap Occultist that I've been playing in the Hardcore Betrayal League. I am currently at level 97. When I say overview, essentially I'm just going to be going over what I've done with the build, my choices on gear, what I've found to be best, and kind of my thoughts behind all the choices I've made. But before we get into that, let's toss in a quick T16 map. I know some people are going to yell at me because I'm using the blue T16 map, but that's why I've been rolling them on this league, and it makes it easy to just kind of really easily show through how the build functions. So the first thing you'll see while mapping is, if you aren't familiar with the new Vortex rework, it is now an instant cast ability with a cooldown, and the damage on both it and Cold Snap have been buffed pretty substantially. And so a lot of my mapping with Vortex is kind of just running through to the middle of a pack, taking advantage of phasing to make sure I get right in the middle. And popping that Vortex and then moving on to the next one. Using Cold Snap when Vortex is on cooldown. Or maybe if I need to nuke something from a distance. Like some porcupines, something dangerous. And it maps pretty smooth. It's not breaking any clear speed records. There's some things you can do with Profane Bloom and Extra Area of Effect if you want that. But mine's kind of more of a all-around build for mapping and bossing. And it's real goddamn Has tanky. Thanks to being an occultist. Don't really have to worry about the Desire syndicate members too much. Even it. on these high tier maps. However, I don't want to talk to them right now. I've got my safe house in a really nice spot. I don't want to mess with it. So we'll just leave that for later. But... As far as other options for the mapping, if you don't like the instant kind of cooldown vortex melee range style, you can use cold snap to map as your main skill if you want to. And to change between the two skills is really easy. All you do is just swap the gems. The supports stay the same from the 4 link and the 6 link. I do it occasionally, sometimes on like less AoE maps because my speed feels kind of slow with the smaller AoE vortex or like dangerous maps with porcupines in it so I can hit them from a distance and not have to worry about getting just exploded on. Now you can see the boss killing is a... Uh... You know, it goes well. Damage is solid. Tankiness is through the roof. This is the key to a we ain't worried all, at that all about no bosses. The sanity of the mine. And that's a... Uh, that's your average T16 map. So now let's hop into the uh, the gear for the build. It's a CI build. So obviously we've got a lot of ES gear. ES bases all across the board. Um, if you want to craft your own, just pretty much dense fossils by themselves can craft everything. I think the only exception is I've uh, been working on a pair of boots that I was doing dense and the shutterings to get the movement speed. But pretty much dense fossils across all the ES bases. Sintrek, obviously, even after they got nerfed, still really good. Very uh, accessible, high ES base. They even have some dexterity, which can help you out. And for helmet, if you're just getting started, you might want to look into a Heretic's Veil. Less energy shield than a good rare, but it takes care of all your mana reservation problems that you might have prior to getting an Enlightened Gem and some other things set up. And it's nice and cheap, so... Another option there. As well as body armor, you could use an incandescent heart. Uh, I think if you can get a high ES Vol Regalia, probably anything above like 700 energy shield, I think is where you start beating out the incandescent heart. But incandescent heart does give you a lot of elemental mitigation, so that's an option. Then like the gloves and the shields, you just go rares. Get as much ES as you can. Get the resistances that you can. Um, and then the jewelry is kind of the same deal again you just energy shield this is where i've focused a lot of my resistance rolls so you can see this one's got a ton of res i was really lucky to find that one pretty early and then i crafted this one 
and they also both have the faster start of energy shield recharge craft from the bench on them which is really important to get your defenses going you want to have that recharge delay as low as possible the lower tier of it which costs two regal orbs 18 no not the 18 12 to 17 is from lookout map and then the higher tier the 1x tier is from carcass map so once you get some like nice end game rings you want to throw that one on otherwise the lower tier is fine my amulet currently is just like a I've had it for a while, it's probably my weakest item, but just energy shield, energy shield, resists, whatever. Just get stats that you need on it. Um, for that one, I am planning and working towards swapping over to a Solstice Vigil, the new Shaper Amulet. It lets you run Temp Chains for free, and then I'll use that extra available mana to add in an aspect of the spider. Get some DPS boost, but it's been a pretty long process of grinding towards that, but a good... Definitely really strong end game option if you can get your hands on one and get it set up. And then the belt here you can see is one of the other only crafts I did with not just a dense fossil. I did dense plus frigid to get that cold damage roll. I was looking for cold damage in the ES from body armor. And then I hit a okay flat ES roll and was able to craft a res. Pretty solid. Kind of hard to make because the cold damage is a lot more rare than I thought. If you look for one with just flat energy shield and energy shield from body armor, that was much easier to hit. And then finally, we've got the weapon, which, uh, this one was fun. There's some interesting things we've got this league. So, ultimately, all it comes down to on the weapon is you want as much damage as you can, whether it be increased damage or cold damage over time multi. Just as much as you can get, whatever's going to give you the highest boost. And then you need one open suffix... Or the trigger a socketed spell when you use a skill craft. And the way I went about it was fossil crafting. Because I knew this from last league. Nice strategy for the CI builds. Or I did a pristine fossil for damage on full life. A bound fossil for minion damage. And a corroded fossil which just blocked a bunch of elemental mods. And made it easier to hit the two mods I wanted. Went through a whole bunch of those. Uh, whenever I hit minion in full life I would annul the weapon down. Until I ended up with this one where I just had the two mods and multi-modded it. Like other options is like a temple scepter. With has, which has the 90 to 95 I think percent minion damage. It's a lot easier to get that. And it's not that much less damage. Because you can find them as one stat blues. And then you know maybe regal and ol or whatever. Or like I said maybe you just find a weapon with a bunch of cold damage or a bunch of spell damage. And like the damage over time multi you just throw the craft on that. It's just all about damage in the trigger socket and spell which is a big thing that uh you can see now let's jump into the gems i suppose to cover that i think that's about all for the gear yeah my weapon triggers socketed spells when i use a skill and i've got three different spells in here i've got Stormbrand, which helps apply elemental equilibrium and also whenever you know it crits it hits a lot so it can crit more often to proc elemental overload, good, good stuff. Two DPS boosts. Orb of Storms, which does the same thing, serves the same purpose. And then Frost Bomb, which just gives a minus 25 cold res debuff to any uh, monsters that it hits. And the way the weapon works with this trigger socketed spells is each spell has a separate five second cooldown. So if I cast once, this is hit the phase run. You can see the Stormbrand is right there. If I cast again, the Frost Bomb goes off. If I cast again, the Orb of Storms goes off. So it just cycles through them. They have a cooldown. And the reason I put the Frost Bomb in the middle was to space out the two Lightning spells since it does that cycling. I think that's a nice way to do it. Yeah, so that's the weapon stuff. In my helmet, I've got my Blasphemy Auras, Blasphemy... Enfeeble, Temp Chains, and Lighten. Pretty standard stuff. Shield's got the Castle Damage taken, Immortal Call, and also the Flame Dash. I've got my Discipline over here in an Unset Ring, which was a tough thing to do. I like specifically needed this to be an Unset so I could fit that in without having to drop like Flame Dash or Arcane Surge or maybe the Increased Duration. I didn't want to drop any of the other gems I had. I think the thing to drop if you didn't have an Unset would probably be... <laughs> 
this increased duration gem for the phase run arcane surge. But it is nice to have if you can get it set up that way. And then in the boots, obviously, phase run, arcane surge, increased duration. It's instant cast to keep the arcane surge up basically for free. Makes it last a lot longer. And then also the vigilant strike, which I'm using with the threshold jewel to get really long fortifies. It only takes one gem socket as opposed to the standard like shield charge faster attacks fortify taking up three. And it gives you a 34 second fortify. It's real, real nice, especially for bosses where you're not necessarily wanting to always just jump into melee range. And then finally, we've got the uh, the two damage skills. In the four link, we've got the secondary, I call it, the utility skill, which is, uh, for, my, for me, it's the cold snap linked with hypothermia for damage and chill effect. Bone chill for the bone chill debuff and more chill effect to scale that debuff. And efficacy for just damage and the skill duration. Now, the reason I have bone chill here is because since it applies a debuff to the mob, it also affects my vortex in the six link, even though it's in the weaker link. So it's a better boost than if I were to put bone chill in the six link and swap something else in the four link. It's stronger overall. And it also helps that cold snap also has a little bit of chill effect on its own. I think I'm sitting at roughly like Hello. a 22% chill from all the chill effect scaling off of the 10% base chill, which also slows enemies way, way down. Even on like Fighting Shaper, you can see he's noticeably slower. And then we've got the, uh, the Vortex. Vortex linked with Hypothermia, Swift Affliction, Controlled Destruction, Efficacy, and Elemental Focus. And the only thing I would really say you could swap with this is if maybe you got like a plus one chest or something, or you just really like Empower. Drop the Swift Affliction for like a level 4 in power, potentially, but I'm not really going to bother with anything like that. And yeah, that's all the gear, that's all the gems. I guess real quick, the flasks. Quicksilver of Adrenaline. Standard. I've got a Sulfur Flask with my Curse Removal. I've got a Basalt Flask with Ignite Removal. I've got the Quartz Flask again. This is for the phasing. Not so much for the dodge, just... Being able to phase through enemies to get to the middle of the pack is much nicer than getting stuck at the edge with the Vortex. And then I've got a Stibnite Flask for the blind. And it's also my bleed removal. There's one thing to note on the Flask stuff. You could potentially drop the Ignite removal for most most content other than some fire bosses that do big ignites. You could drop the Ignite removal for the new Veiled Flask mod that comes from the Katarina Flask if you have the craft for it. But the one that gives 3% life regen per during Flask effect could also be really strong on one of your Flasks. In my case, it would be the Basalt. And uh, people are going to ask, why no Soul Catcher? Because Soul Catcher doesn't really work when you actually have to spend your mana. It's better suited to the EBMOM version where you're spending energy shield and the fact that you can't heal your mana back up isn't a problem. If I was to use a soul catcher, I would just be constantly out of mana. And I wouldn't be able to cast anything other than maybe a vol skill, so wouldn't recommend it for the CI version. Keep that for the, the Eldritch battery stuff. And that's the inventory. Now let's go to the tree. Real quick, jump through this. It's going to start from the witch... Show my current tree at level 97. We've got energy shield. We've got more energy shield. We've got some AoE, minion damage, spell damage. Travel through the jewel sockets and then over to the left. Get dual curse. Get LE overload. Come down. LE equilibrium. Get some more ES. Skill duration is really nice. More curse effect on skittering runes. Towards the Templar, Zealot's Oath. Get that regen. I've currently got this Sovereignty Wheel for the Reduced Reservation. Um, ultimately, when I get that set up with the Solstice Vigil Shaper Amulet, I should be able to drop all four of these nodes and just pick up this one Reservation node over here instead. But I've still got that for now. Um, we've got over here the Minion Nodes to Spiritual Aid, which is really important. It's how we get the Minion Damage to scale us. There's also a little bit of Regen in there. Some more ES. 
And then this jewel socket's important because it's the only real one nearby that has 40 strength in the radius, which is what you need for the Vigil Jewel, which makes the Fortify from Vigilant Strike last super, super long. So as soon as you want to start using the Vigilant Strike, you need to grab that jewel socket. And then the other split from up here, we go to the right. We get the cold damage multi. This is where a lot of the DPS starts coming in. Buffed cold nodes with cold multi, cold damage, freeze, chill effect stuff. Essence Surge gets you the ES, the recharge stats, which you really need. CI, obviously, it's a CI build. Hex Master for... Mostly I get this for the AoE of Curse skills. I really like that extra Blasphemy radius. But it's also got Curse effect, which is strong on its own anyway. And then to the new Fingers of Frost, Wheel, Cold Damage, Cold Damage Over Time Multi, more chill related effects, Down to Shadow, ES, ES and Damage, 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 ES, Damage. Yeah, so slightly lower level tree, uh, what I would drop in order from my last three or four points. This small node isn't needed, you can't get it. The Spell Damage node at the start of which you can drop as well as one or two of these ES nodes you can drop temporarily if you need points. And like I said, if you're not using Vigilant Strike yet, you can drop this jewel socket. But that about covers the tree, other than the Ascendancies, which you can see here. I've got the new Cold Nodes, Void Beacon minus Cold Res, Frigid Wake, bunch of damage, Chill Freeze immunity. It can even freeze unique monsters, which is really fun to see happen randomly. When you're fighting a boss and it just stops moving entirely. And then it has them dealing 10% reduced damage if they're chilled. And the standard CI occultist stuff, Wicked Ward, Vile Bastion, gives you tons of defense. Gives you the OPES recharge. Gives you a bunch of regen while you're mapping. All around super powerful nodes. And that is the tree. I will uh, put a link to um, a path of building link with this current tree set up. And the gear set up down in the description. I'm also going to put one in for what I expect the setup to look like once I get everything ready for this amulet. So there will be two links down there for the POBs of the endgame stuff. And that should cover all of the, you know, the gear, the tree, the gems, everything I just went over. Aside from that, uh, bandits. We've got Soul of Solaris, which is just really strong defensively. I could also lose use Lunaris for mapping, but it's currently bugged still, I believe, where the the movement speed buff is actually becoming a movement speed penalty, so you don't really want to be touching that until they fix it. And then Soul of Grithkull for the minor one. I just really like that node. I use it on almost every build. Really strong. And for... Did I call those the bandits? I called those the bandits. Let's just keep that in. Keep the embarrassment. Those are the pantheons. The bandits, we killed all the bandits. We got skill points. Because we don't need any of those other stats. We like skill points. They're good. They're nice. They're fun. Yes. And finally, before I let you go, let's do a real quick leveling tree. So you can see uh, what it might look like while you're getting pre-endgame, pre-CI stuff. When you're leveling, you can either go with Cold Snap and Vortex. I've had a lot of people say they've done it. It works really well. I leveled at the start of the league with Blade Vortex. But either way, it's going to be basically the exact same tree. The only reason I would say to use Blade Vortex is if you don't like the cooldowns on the skills early on, the degens. But I think they are probably the, the way to go. So I'm just going to put together a level 50 tree or so. This will also be linked down below if you want to grab it and look at it. But to start off, we get the, minion, or the spell damage at which you can grab Heart and Soul. And then immediately... Just go straight over to Templar, grab some Templar life, grab Precision for the Dexterity and the Speed. Templar Damage, Templar Res, Templar AoE. And then can come back to the Witch, grab the rest of this, get the Witch AoE. Maybe get the Flask Nodes to speed yourself up. And then jump back once again to the Templar. And start grabbing things like maybe some life nodes here. Maybe mind over matter when you need that tankiness. Get the nodes behind it as well. Get the other damage over here. While we move up towards the minion nodes. Which are really good for leveling since they're very generic damage. And then again more life nodes here. 
I think that should cover the whole Templar side for early game. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything's missing there. At which point you could grab these minion nodes as well, since they are now scaling you. And finally you would go up through this jewel socket. Grab Breath of Rhyme if you're cold already, otherwise you're probably looking at starting to go towards Eldritch Battery to do that pre-CI. Unless you're planning to go CI like immediately at level 70, you've got gear and stuff put together. Then you could probably skip the Eldritch Battery and just power level yourself up. But otherwise you would can grab that early maps. It's a nice tankier alternative to the regular MOM since it lets you run double blasphemies once you also get dual curse. But this should be about a good level 60, 55 to 60 ish tree. Get you going to Blood Aqueducts at the very least. And then, like I said, you can grab Eldritch Battery, you can grab Dual Curse after that. Start moving over towards Shadow for those damage, those life. And that's how you level it. And that's the build. And that's the guide. And that's the video. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything. Hopefully, the build helped. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, the video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.